accepted wisdom tells us that the convertible versions of our favourite sports cars always end up being the soft option. More the poser's choice, they end up being heavier, flexier and just softer than their coupe brothers. Accepted wisdom, AMG seems to want to overturn with this new GTC Roadster. It's more powerful than the GTS Coupe, it's got some of the trick bits from the GTR including that car's four wheel steering and wide body stance. It's also got the more aggressive Panamericana grille. On paper, this could be the best AMG GT yet. There's only one way to find out though, isn't there? The weather conditions here are perhaps not ideal for driving convertible. There's a bit of water dribbling in from here. It's actually snowing here in Arizona. There may be a slight mismatch with the external footage you see of the car, but I'm going to try and do my best to give a sense of what this car is like. And that is to say, really, really exciting. It is a hell of a machine. So before I get into what the GT Roadster is actually like to drive, I probably just better put it into context as to where it sits in the now slightly more complex AMG GT range. So you can start with the 476 horsepower GT. You can have that as a coupe or as a roadster. Then you've got the 522 horsepower S. That's currently just a coupe, although a roadster version may well follow. Then you get GTC, which is 557 horsepower, which is what we're in now. Over and above that, you get the GTR, which is the 585 horsepower monster with all its trick aero and all that kind of thing. This car is an interesting mix because it gets the rear wheel steering from the GTR and 557 horsepower from a tweaked version of the twin turbo hot V V8. It's got slightly lower compression ratio. It's got more or less the same torque as the S tune, but slightly peakier power delivery. So it's got another 500 revs before you reach the peak power output and a broader range of grunt and there's lots of it I've got to say this is a really really quick car and a noisy one as well I hope you can hear some of that V8 sound over the wind it's absolutely phenomenal this engine so what does this give you over the standard GT which is what I drove before well standard GT has got steel brakes mechanical limited slip diff the narrower body and it feels as the name suggests like a GT with this GTC version, things suddenly get a lot more serious. You've got 57 millimeters more in the rear arches. It gives it that really squat stance. It really changes the looks. It makes it look like a much, much more aggressive machine. Within those wider arches, you've got the four wheel steering mechanism. Now, in theory, the idea of this is that it makes the GTC feel like a 557 horsepower MX-5. That's the theory. Anyway, obviously, in the way of these things, it can kind of virtually lengthen and shorten the wheelbase to give you either more stability or more agility. It's got an electronic limited slip diff on this car so it's more adjustable than the one in the standard GT. Weirdly in this four wheel steering actually feels a bit lighter at the wheel than the, um, the regular GT that I was driving before. Does it feel any more agile? Yes I think it does. You can definitely chuck it into the bends a bit more but the, the standard one's hardly a slug this is really really pointy when the diff starts locking up you can feel it before the car starts to rotate so you can choose to either use that rotation or just back out of it a little bit but for a car with so much technology in the chassis it's actually got a really nice natural feel to it and all the time you've got that fantastic engine, it really is an awesome piece of kit. I think of anybody, AMG has perhaps navigated the transition to downsizing and turbocharging a lot better than anyone else. The, the throttle response in this engine is really, really good. Okay, there's a minuscule softness to the initial throttle response compared with the old 6.2 V8 in the SLS, but there really are very few complaints about how this engine delivers its power, how much power there is, and the range across which you can enjoy it. It's absolutely phenomenal, I've got to say. So what else might you consider for this money? Well, I suppose you might be looking at a Jaguar F-Type SVR, which is about 115 grand, I think, for the convertible. That's 
puts it on a kind of level with the, the standard GT, but frankly, I don't think the Jag really feels like a six-figure car inside like this does it. The Mercedes really does have the feel of a properly exotic car. Maybe an R8 V10 Spider. that's a, another interesting and exciting car that is in fact improved by being an open top. But I think the car that AMG has really, really gone after is the 911 Turbo convertible, which there's a lot of number crunching I could go through, but in terms of the power, the weight, the performance, all those things, the GT Roadster seems absolutely level pegging with that. But interestingly, if you look at the pricing, the 140 grand AMG charges you for the GTC is pretty much equivalent to a turbo convertible, but the performance figures and all the rest are pretty much equivalent to a Turbo S, which costs more like 155 grand. So that's really quite an impressive effort by AMG to get that level of performance for basically a 15 grand saving over the Porsche. And frankly, I think the AMG is a much, much better looking car. And it's also more fun to drive as well. The 911 Turbo is an incredible piece of kit. It's got a hell of a lot of technology in it as well, but although Porsche has tried to make it a bit more characterful, it's still, dare I say it, a little bit appliance-like to drive, and that's just not the case with this AMG. You can just hurl it down a road like this, and even though it's an incredibly quick car, stupidly quick in fact, it gives you enough back to make it an enjoyable experience. There's enough feel through the steering. It's still hydraulically assisted, remember, unlike many of its competitors. It's just an exciting car, and I think Really, if you're spending this kind of money on a convertible, you want it to be exciting, but it doesn't feel soft, it doesn't feel dumbed down. This is a properly focused sports car, one that you can enjoy with the roof down. In fact, I'd argue that perhaps chopping the roof off the GT is the best thing AMG has ever done to this car. Sure, the coupe is a great piece of kit, but this Roadster just seems to make more sense of that bombastic character, that fabulous V8 and it's just got this winning blend of old school dynamics but new school technology and would I have it over a 911 Turbo Cabrio any day of the week it's a blinding blinding car this and with that I'll say thanks for watching please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on pistonheads.com for more on the AMG GT Roadster